Hey guys, so in this video, uh, basically I just wanted to go through some of my uh, favorite features, uh, some of the tools that I use. Um, so we'll be mainly in VS Code and I'll be going through some extensions and some other stuff, uh, writing maybe a couple of functions just to show you like the JSON tree and, and things like that. Um, Actually, what I'm going to do at the same time is uh, 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 uh. actually what I'm going to do is I'm uh, going to open a folder in a bit. I just create a folder called Playground. But actually, I've got I've got a project that actually goes with that really well. So give me two seconds. I'm going to disappear. I'm going to open the project, and then we're going to go over all the cool stuff um, that I use. So see you in a sec. Okie doke. So. Here we are, it's just a simple uh, timeline, basically just uh, HTML, CSS, there's not even much in the app. And I'm actually, what I'm going to do in a second is open a new script file. Oh, actually, maybe I'll, I'll just run it over here to show you some cool functions, some, some cool stuff that I use with it. First thing that I actually really love is the, uh, the live server. That saves so much time. So let me just open it quickly. And I actually have it on another screen with some other stuff. There we go. Boom. There we go. So, yeah, you know, that's just some cool stuff happening over here. So first, yeah, code editor, accessories. The VS Code, like, again, I've used bits of Atom before, but, like, just I never got really into it because you get, and that gets me to my uh, first extension, which is Emmet. Emmet is absolutely, I don't think even it's here as extension, I think it's just like it comes as a core feature so that when whatever you're writing, you know, you automatically get these tags done for you, like, you know, you have these snippets, which is pretty amazing and it you can just uh, uh, enhance it with, you know, whatever you want it for, like ES7, React, Redux, um, or JavaScript, ES6, um, it's, it's really cool. Um, obviously, my all-time uh, favorite extension is the live server because that just saves you so much hassle rather than opening your file in the, in the through your file path like with normal explorer or finder and then just reloading every time you make a change that just that that would just suck so instead you know you could basically run it with a server and then do like a node mon or something but if you're doing just front end or just some HTML, CSS, the live server is a huge, huge help. Um, same with the SAS compiler. So if you're writing anything in SAS, you just uh, open it uh, with I, let's say, would have, uh, instead of style, I would have, let's add, I don't know, uh, CSS, boom. The second I have any SCSS file over here, I'll write anything in it and save it. I should automatically, yeah, no, get the option to watch SAS, and anytime I do anything, basically this guy will create, automatically creates the CSS file with the CSS.map. So basically, then you don't need to touch your CSS at all. Everything's happening live. So on change or on save, you get your SAS automatically compiled, which again, I think is a, a bit nicer than using. Uh, something like a server again you, you can do it for npm but I just think this is so much better so let me just quickly delete that because we don't actually need any of this and then so so that's that's another really cool really cool feature uh, from some other ones uh, auto rename tag again so if you if I'm changing something over here you can see that the end tag is changing as well so that can save you some frustration when you don't don't know and something doesn't work. Now, npm obviously, like whenever you do anything with any packages, uh, like I use Axios a lot, or uh, if I'm using Node, then obviously you need npm one way or another. And whatever you're doing, you just npm start for any kind of React stuff and anything anything you really do npm is just a must have. Um, Prettier is really good, so I have it set up so that it changes, basically formats my code on save, which sometimes can be a bit bit of a drag, because sometimes you actually want 
some code split across multiple lines and it actually puts it back on the same line so readability wise not that great but that's just you know a little tiny bug like usually it works really really well uh, VS color picker again that's with my CSS wherever there's any color so if I hover over it it can give me anything I want if I click again it will give me the hexadecimal or HSL or RGB so whatever you want and the second you would change the opacity it gives you automatically the alpha option as an RGBA so yeah that's that's pretty cool I like this extension a lot apart from that material icon theme again that's just a you know when you have a lot of files like if you have a create react app or something it's really good or if you're working with node and you're using EJS you know some template in and then you're using a bunch of other stuff you have loads of CSS a bunch of HTML files so instead of reading the endings all the time you can just you know it's it's easier to uh, orient within it just like you know where you are so these are these tiny icons they're, they're actually pretty cool apart from that but yeah bracket pack colorizer again like if you're doing a bunch of nested stuff that that really helps if you have really long re really long functions or something that's that's super useful and then code snippets obviously whatever you're using that's always helpful although sometimes it can give you some wrong code and it's like oh god and then you have to change it back because it changes for you so you, you just press enter when you shouldn't have and it's like oh go again <laughs> so that's the only thing and yeah again so syntax highlighting that's pretty much it over here so what I actually wanted to show you is a one of my favorite 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 things I don't actually want to save anything here um, but in app let's just quickly create a function There we go. So, let's wait. Axios dot get and again, want to get HTTP and then. <laughs> and then console.log press. So let's get this. And if we go back to our tools and just run the console, what we should have, we actually need to call it, shouldn't we? That's actually a good idea. Um, okay, so right here, let's go and get planets. All right, so there we go. And here, I'm going to promise reference Axios is not defined. I get play. Oh my god, yeah, of course, I forgot to get Axios. Sorry, guys, my bad. So, we're going to grab this guy, put it into our code, and we can put it right here. And then up. Let's try again. There we go. So, that's our data. And and we've got this guy so obviously we're getting our data so now if we if we actually wanted to use it with the X it's like if you write in stuff in XML it's like ugh. but here we can actually get res dot data let's get our stuff here and we already have those people planets everything boom and we can choose what we want actually this this that we need to I actually did it wrong for some reason so oh right sorry planets slash one okay and there we go so you got tatooine all the information gravity you know all that stuff like this is actually pretty cool the html tree generator as well so you can see any page you can see what's what whatever everything is and you can see number of children the node id everything everything is there so that can sometimes help you to see how the whole app is structured. Oh, sorry, how, how the whole website is structured. Okay, so anyway, at least I showed you Axios. <laughs> that's, that's how programming sometimes goes. Like I'll show you, I want to show you something. I haven't used it for a while, the, uh, the adjacent tree. But I think it's, hmm, it's interesting why it's not 
doing what it's supposed to. I'm probably just forgetting something, as I do. But anyway, so if you want to, then I'll put anything from the, uh, from the fetch request. It's, it's super easy to do it. And even if you would be doing some testing, like with Axios, it actually gives you everything that Ajax gives you. So that's all the steps. Because like I literally, if, if I want everything to be super compatible with all the browsers, I just use Axios. Because it's just like all the implementation details go away super quickly. So that's pretty cool. What else did I want to show you in terminal? I mean, obviously Git. So usually, if if I'm putting anything into, you know, if I'm if I'm using Git, or if I'm pushing something into GitHub, then the uh, you know getting the Git ignore and just giving it everything you don't want there, then that's pretty cool. And then apart from that. I think this is about it. Let me have a look at the uh, at the page. I, I made this specifically so I can show you this stuff. Uh, Chrome DevTools, yeah, obviously. That I don't think I have to go through that. The JSON tree. But then, yeah, JavaScript is weirdness. I actually really enjoy doing stuff in uh, JavaScript. Like, first time I get to it, because it's it's super weird, because, like, if you've ever done anything like a C-based language or something, it's multi thread you already know that, like, the async stuff is, is quite different. Whereas here, like I was like, what, what, what the hell is this? Like, how does this work? And then you get down, go down the rabbit hole, and you go like, oh, okay, so there's web APIs, and um, so the V8 or the Spider Monkey or whatever you're working with actually hands everything over to the web API, and then once it, everything's resolved, it basically spits it out to the uh, stack queue, and then whenever your call stack's clear, then uh, the stack queue pushes it, pushes your resolved code onto the uh, on, onto the call stack through the event loop. So that's less like, it's actually pretty cool when you look at it. It's the same like with the interpreted or, or compiled where the right answer is actually like, depends on the implementation. Well, actually it's like, it's mostly interpreted, but there is also the just-in-time compilers and uh, you know, stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty, actually pretty cool when you go like deeper down that rabbit hole, it's like, hmm, interesting. What I wanted to say here is like the ES6, I think made JavaScript just so much more powerful. Uh, even like when I was learning stuff like with OOP, just uh, the prototypical inheritance and stuff like that, when you actually have the classes, it's kind of, I think, easier to comprehend, like to, to learn what's what. Anyway, uh, when it comes to backend, I actually, because I'm not a backend uh, developer yet, I just know bits about J uh, Node. Very similar to like with React and with uh, like MongoDB, you don't want to be working just with the basically with the raw version. Like I think with with Node.js, you want to get into Express as quickly as you can, because it just hides all all the implementation details that you will never ever like. You, you might need them, but if, especially if you're a front end engineer uh, or fr front end developer, you, you will not use. You will not need to know that stuff. So just go straight to the Express and you'll be totally fine. Like, like maybe look at it, see how it is, just so you can appreciate Express more. But yeah, it hides so many implementation details behind the curtain and makes your coding much more enjoyable in, in Node.js. Yeah, with databases, I actually looked at SQL and like SQLize and how to use it, but I've never needed it. I, everything I do is I really work with JSON, so I looked and looked at and learned uh, MongoDB, like at least the basics. And then if you like the GUI <laughs> or the uh, graphical user interface, then they have the Robo 3T. I think there are some US uh, ones as well. So that there are some graphical user interfaces that you can use to access it. I'm just used to the command line. MongoDB was a bit of a, a bit of a drag because when Apple came out with Catalina, they basically denied the access to the root folder. So all their documentation on, on the uh, MongoDB uh, website was just wrong. So it was, it was really frustrating for a bit, but then, you know, your old friend Stack Overflow comes in and, and then you're able to do it. But yeah, that was a, that was a bit of a drag. Uh, MVC, yeah, using the MVC model, I tried it. Uh, again, I'm not a backend engineer, so, or backend developer, so I don't really know. But the uh, you know models, views, and controllers, like making everything nice and neat, so like your file structure is pretty cool. 
I've seen it, I've used it once, but again, I don't really remember it, but it looked really cool. Like it looked really helpful, like, like as a, as a code strap, as a file structure. And then with template engines, I know there's stuff like bug and there's one other one, but I've only used EJS and I'm again, I'm not a big fan. I like to render everything I can on the front end. I know there's some stuff you can render on the front end, but again, like if, if I need to use backend at the moment, I just use it for say authentication or, you know, just to hide my API keys. But apart from that, I don't really do much with it. So I think that's it for backend. MongoDB, yeah, I just don't, yeah. So if you read through the documentation, the uh, community one is, as far as I understand it, is for basically the offline uh, stuff. So so whenever you want to store stuff on your uh, computer or like on a local, local machine or something, then you use the community uh, server basically or the community database. And if you want to go online, then you use the Atlas. And I think that it let, no, uh, there is the free option through AWS for Amazon Web Services where you can have like, I don't know how much it is. I think it's half a gig or something like that. So that's pretty cool actually for free. So you can store some data if you want or like something to share, you know, some database to share between your coworkers or something. That's pretty cool. Um, Robo 3T again, that's just the uh, graphical user interface for using uh, MongoDB and yeah, then command line. Yeah, that's that's how I use it. Just just through the uh, just through the command line. Um, that's pretty much it. And then we've got yeah, React. That's my all-time favorite. Is it a framework? Is it a library? I don't really know. Like they say, it's a library. Like Facebook official docs say, it's a library. So I'm gonna call it a library. But again, it's like with Node.js. If I knew about Redux straight from the beginning, I would have saved myself a lot of pain. Like I guess you want to learn it, like how to do you know, change or everything about state through the uh, just passing it as props and everything. And you kind of learn the downward data flow. But again, like once, once you get a whiff of Redux, you'll be like, nope, I'm never doing that again. Redux onwards only. Um, I know that there are some other libraries like Redux. I've never used them. I've only used Redux so far. So I don't know how the others work, but Redux is something that, that you definitely want to use like straight away with React. And then create React app, it just, again, helps you so much. It's quite bulky because it has like 250 megabytes, something on download. So uh, again, it's up to you, but it already comes with everything you really need. Um, you'll be deleting a lot of stuff, but it comes with Bubble, it comes with Webpack, it comes with uh, basically all the node modules, everything is there. So all the dependencies, all the stuff, all the stuff is there. And it's and yeah, so it's really useful. Makes makes your life when you're developing an app like really easy. Um, and I think that's that's the, uh, everything I want to talk about. It's already way too long. So thank you, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.